Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the Blender user interface and just trying to make it a little less scary because I know it it looks pretty crazy when you first open it up, but hopefully by the end of this video, it will be a little less intimidating. So I'm going to just blaze through this as fast as I can. We're going to go more in depth on every single one of these pieces and buttons and what every little thing does. But right now, I just want you to, I just want to just just start the process. So here we go. So up in the top left, we've got the Blender icon. You can bring back the splash screen if you want, um, tell you the versions. You can open up new projects. You can open up recent projects, uh, click anywhere to clear it. And then we've got your edit where we're gonna do our preferences. We've got render where you can render images and animations. We've got the window dropdown. So if you've got dual monitors, you can pop out a new window. And we've got the help dropdown for manual and tutorials, very helpful. Next, we have these different scene layouts that Blender has pre-made for you. So we've got the layout where we're gonna do most of the time is where we'll be here. Uh, you can double click those and rename them, but you don't have to. Um, next, we have modeling, which is gonna switch us into edit mode right here. And that's where we're gonna mess with the geometry. We've got sculpting, if we wanted to do some sculpting. We've got UV editing for more for animations or adding textures and things to this. We've got texture painting, which we're not gonna use in this lesson, and shading. If you wanna change colors, you can do that right there. We've got animation, if you're gonna do any animation or if you're interested in animation, they've got preset layouts for you. Or if you wanted to render your animation, you can watch it happen there. We've got compositing, if you wanna do visual effects. We've got scripting, if you know Python code and you wanna make you know, Python automation code. It's just crazy. You can do so many things and you can add more. Just click that little button and say if you wanted to do video editing, you could add that. So those are different, just different layouts that Blender has pre-made for you to make it really easy to swap um, when you're doing more complex projects. But for most of the time, we're going to just stay in layout and modeling. We're just, this is where we're going to live. We may jump into here for just a second, but most of the time we're just going to live here. And so that's what these guys are. And then next to that, we have the scene. So this is kind of like having a project within a project. Uh, we're not gonna use that too much, uh, but it's very powerful when you get into more advanced uh, designs. Next, we have view layer, which I don't really ever use, but from what I've heard and seen, um, it's just for more complex uh, rendering. Down here, we have the 3D viewport. This is where the magic happens. This is where the fun is. This is where you can click this little widget to move around. You can also click the little zoom uh, magnifying glass, click and drag in there, and that will let you zoom. You've got a little hand that will grab the screen. It's called panning, so you can pan your view. You can toggle into your camera view, and I've already got a camera set up here for you, but don't worry about that. Um, but you can toggle into your camera. It's kind of like you're becoming a cameraman. You can see this little dotted line that's popping up. So go ahead and click that button a few times. It's pretty fun. And then, um, you know, turn it back off so you're not in the camera. Then we've got orthographic projection. So this is going to be very helpful. It's just going to flatten your view um, and make everything very, just no perspective or distortion. So it's very helpful when you're creating objects um, for 3D printing or just creating anything. We'll talk about when and where and why to use that later. So next we have our tools. So if you hit T on the keyboard, you should see this little guy pop out. And those are all your tools. You can grab things, move it, rotate it, scale it, all of them, uh, draw on things, measure things, and add primitive objects. So we're going to go into all of these, like I said. Um, you can also click and drag. It's kind of hard to get it. But if you barely hover right there, you can grab and drag those out. And that'll give you the titles. So that might make it a little easier if you're brand new. It kind of reminds you of what these things are. Um, we've got different, uh, you know, modes that we can switch in. We're just going to leave it in object mode. You've got things where you can change your views. You can change how you're selecting things. You can add new objects and cameras and lights and all things here. Yeah, and you can mess with your objects with this tab. Um, over here, you can toggle on and off the view of certain objects in your, in your scene. We've got here, if you say if we had a little gizmo turned on for this object, this is going to change, uh, you know, how some of these things are displayed. You can turn it on and off by, you know, see how it's blue. If you, that's on, that's off, and that will just toggle that. And we've got this overlay. So this one you're probably going to use a lot. You can click on that little, those two little spheres that are kind of overlaying each other. This is your overlay, and that will let you toggle and turn on and off your overlays. And we've also got a bunch of different information that you can add in here. And then right here, we've got x-ray view. So you can kind of make the, your object see through here. And we'll just turn that back off. 
And then these little circles here, these are just different ways you can see your objects in your 3D viewport. So everybody click on your Suzanne, make sure she lights up and then hit period on your numpad or you can go to view frame selected. Bloop. And that will tighten up our view here. And if we click on these different spheres here, these circles, it will change the view. So that's wireframe. Then we've got solid, which is what we're gonna stay in most of the time. Then we've got a material preview. So that's just gonna show you any materials you have on your objects. And we have EV. So this is a real-time render engine. You can turn off your, your overlays there and just kind of move around. And this is rendering in real time. It's insane, it's amazing. So that is your different views there. And below that, we have our information panel here. And you can just hit in on your keyboard, in right here, and that will bring out your information. This is different information about what you have selected. If we have Suzanne selected, this is the dimensions of Suzanne in millimeters. And then we've got the tool tab, which is gonna give us information about which tool we have selected. We have the view tab, which is gonna give us information about our camera and our 3D cursor, which is this little guy right here. We're gonna talk all about him later. Um, and we have some other cool add-ons that we're gonna talk about later in this section that you have to have because it's just gonna make your life so much easier. We also have the 3D print toolbox tab, which you don't have probably turned on right now. So don't worry, don't fret. Uh, but this is gonna help you check your 3D objects and make sure they're ready for 3D printing. Then we've got the edit tab here. And you may not have anything, but we're gonna turn on your bool tool and your auto mirror. Then down below that, I have two that you don't really need for these courses, but this is just uh, so you can start, so you can see my controls. So if you ever wanna do like tutorials, you can download this little add-on. Um, and I also have a VR turned on because I'm interested in virtual reality and building things for that. But we can just leave it on item. That's what we're gonna leave it on most of the time. And then to the right of that, we have our outliner. And this is where all your layers and your files um, are organized. So you can see these little filing cabinets. These are collections. Um, essentially, you can just think of them as folders and you can twiddle these folders up and down. It'll also tell you what's beside it. Uh, so right now, this is our CR10 volume. This is our print volume. And then if you twiddle down this studio, you can see we've got our lights and our cameras and some controllers and backgrounds and all kinds of different things. You can see right here, we've got three lights. So if we twiddle that collection down, we've got three lights and we've got a camera. We've got one camera in there and we've got a 360 controller, which we're gonna use for animation later and a background. If you wanna take some cool photos of your design, you can toggle that on. And down here we have the flexible design. And this is the collection we're gonna be doing pretty much all of our design work. So this is gonna be very useful for us. Um, these we can just twiddle back up. And if you ever wanna just turn some of them off, you can click on these check boxes. Notice that turned off the lights and everything. So that's very helpful and useful. We've also got these little icons here. If you don't see those, you can go up to this little golf tee, drop it down and then toggle those on right there. And then you should be able to see them. And this will make it where something, you know, anything in this, in this studio collection is not selectable, um, not visible, doesn't display in the 3D viewport and doesn't render. So that's what these little guys do. If you ever need to toggle those on and off, you can also search for different objects in your outliner and create new collections. Um, if you wanted to, you know, that'll create a new one and you can just double click and rename. If you can't ever see any of these, uh, you may have to scroll your mouse wheel. Uh, sometimes that will kind of slide it over there for you. And then below this, we have our properties. And this is gonna be all the, you know, there's all these different tabs that all do different things depending on which kind of object you have selected. So if I have Suzanne selected, I have, uh, you know, the modifiers. If I zoom out a little bit and select a light, notice now I have a light property. So these are all gonna change depending on what you have selected in your scene. And we're gonna go into way more details on all these, but for now just know this is different areas where you can manipulate all kinds of different things about your scene and your geometry. And the last thing is our timeline. So this is where when we start animating or making our objects spin, we will be using this um, to kind of showcase our animation. You can just hit spacebar and that will start playing. You can hit spacebar again to stop and then hit this little button here to jump it back to the front. But just know we will be using that later. And so that is just a quick overview of 
all the different parts of the Blender user interface. And hopefully that makes it a little less intimidating. I know we didn't cover every single thing in super detail, but I promise we will be going more in depth on lots of these uh, tools. And if you have any questions, you can leave them up in the top right in the discussions panel and we will help you out. All right, and let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson, which is window customization.